Docker. We're going to go ahead and take a Proxmox uh, machine and install Docker on it and probably Portainer as a GUI for the Docker. And uh, then you can run Docker with Proxmox and other containers in addition to the other containers that you can already do with Proxmox. So let's get started. Here we go. This is one of my Proxmox machines. And the first thing you want to do is do an update. So let me just, uh, I got that command in here and let me just uh, pop this up here. So one of the things that's important in doing an update here um, is to always do the disk dash upgrade. And uh, I like to do the dash Y command on there. And so that it, it uh, automatically says yes to your stuff. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to uh, go ahead and get a whole bunch of stuff and download and install it. Okay, so now we've got a updated Proxmox. The first thing we want to do is we want to go and we're going to do an install of a few things here. And let me just do that for you. <clears throat> and so basically, there's a couple of things that need to be installed by default. And we're going to go ahead and do that and let that happen real quick. I will put these in the show notes, all the things that I'm installing uh, and everything. So no need to back that up and pause it on it to see it. So no worries. So now let me just pop this up here. Here is Docker. So what we're going to need to do is add the official GPG key. So the first thing I did here, by the way, is this packages uh, to allow repos or HTTPS. And, and this, what we, we're already logged in as root, so we don't need to do this sudo part. So we just did this part on that last command. So now I'm gonna do this part right here. Not right there. Go. Oh. Again, because I'm copying from the Docker guide, when I did that, they have this sudo. And since I'm already root, we don't need that. So we're going to just do this. And so that's that. Now we're going to add the fingerprint. And there you go with that. <clears throat> now we're going to go down to the next fun part is adding, adding the repo. And here it is. This is very similar to what this is what you see right here. And uh, I don't know if I should make this bigger. Maybe let's do that for you guys, for everyone. <clears throat> Put that back up here, and we're going to hit. Yeah. So now you can see these these things match. And we'll do that. And then, of course, we're going to have to do another update. Come back down here, and we're going to go ahead and install docker uh they wants to do the cli and this uh container.io so we're going to go ahead and do that too and 
paste that in there and boom go ahead and hit yes you can do the dash y at the end of there if you uh um don't want to be answer the yes uh, i i sometimes put it in there sometimes not all right so that part is done and basically we have docker installed here so we just do here uh, ps so that shows that it you know that we don't have any containers or anything so let's move on to the next part portainer all right okay here we are back and so what we need to do is go ahead and create an area for portainer to have data so there we go all right so next up let's go ahead and <clears throat> do a docker run portainer so we're going to go ahead and do some of that here and it's just going to be docker run dash d dash p 9000 oops the 9000 colon 9000 <clears throat> dash B Portainer data and it's going to be the data directory for Portainer uh, dash volume slash var oops, var run docker Sock slash bar slash run slash docker. Oops, me the... <clears throat> Sock. There we go, and we'll call it portainer. And boom, let's see what happens. Oh, un... okay, so now it's pulling it and downloading your image. Blah, blah, blah. And we'll do a Docker PS after this and see what happens here. Docker PS. Boom, there's Portainer. All right, now let's go ahead and see what we get here. Um, this is the uh, IP address we want. Uh huh. And not HTTPS. And then we're going to put that colon 9000 on there. And that should give us Portainer. Hello. <laughs> All right. And now we're into Portainer. Create a username and password, admin. And what we have here, latest news. I'm going to dismiss that for now. And there you'll see our local portainer. And let's see what we can do. If you know how to use portainer, then uh, you can go ahead and. Uh, do that sort of stuff uh, but basically portainer gives you a little bit of GUI interface to your docker stuff but uh, you don't have to use that let me let me just pop back over to our where we did this docker run hello world we can actually do that too docker run hello world
and so that's that now if I go back here and I uh, refresh this guy and see what we have in here see if it if that showed that shows up or not I'm not uh, you know I'm not done a whole lot of docker stuff um, most of the stuff I've done it looks like here we got two containers that are inside there so um, most of the stuff I've done is via command line, but Portainer is a pretty decent uh, place to start if you want to get some uh, web interface on there. One last thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and make sure that Docker is running on boot up. So you can do that by typing in a little command here, I'm going to paste that in here, and enabling Docker, doc, Docker in the uh, system startup. So, and boom. That's all there is to it. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining us.